Episode of the States Up podcast. I'm your host, Brand Freeman. And again, on the podcast, we visit with the student athletes here at Texas State. As we know, right now, we're kind of towards the end of the fall sports season. Soccer right now is in the uh, postseason as we record this podcast. Volleyball only has a few weeks left. And there's still about four games to go in the football season. But uh, it's kind of crossover uh, season as well as basketball is on the horizon. And um, the, the Texas State women and men open up their seasons on Monday, November the 6th. The men are at Little Rock. The women are at home hosting Arlington Baptist. Uh, of course, the Bobcat women are the reigning Sunbelt Conference regular season champions. But a lot of what they had last year, what they had last year is gone. You know, big names like Kennedy Taylor, Denasia Hood, Ja'Kayla Bowie, um, and names like that. But they've added some new players over the offseason. And one of those players joins us now on the podcast as we talk Bobcat women's basketball, Jalen Foster, a junior out of Austin, but a first-year transfer to the program from Western Kentucky. She joins us now. Jalen, how are you? I'm good. I can't complain. I'm good. Well, good. Good stuff, Jalen. And welcome to not only the podcast, but to Texas State. Um, you're kind of looking back a little bit at your time as a Hilltopper um, you were named to Conference USA's all-defensive team this past year, to the all-tournament team as well. Uh, you were Western Kentucky's second-leading scorer a season ago. Had some big games, too, which we'll get into here in a moment. But um, uh, I guess I'll kind of start with, you know, things were going pretty well for Western Kentucky. So then why the decision to transfer? Um, I feel like it's just that time where I'm ready to be closer to home and like be around my family with big moments, weddings, babies, mm -hmm. all that. So I'm looking to uh, be closer and then also be challenged more just to develop myself as a personal um, and on the court as well. So, yeah. You mentioned the family aspect of it. Do I understand that you're an aunt or about to be an aunt? Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah. So uh, my sister just had her second child. So now I'm a on to two on that end. Um, but yeah, she just had her two days ago. So yeah, today I'll be going wow. to see, get to hold her for the first time. So yeah, I always love experience in that. Well, we won't keep you too long on the podcast. You can go and play the role of Ant. Uh, how much do you enjoy that? You know, by the way, being around, you know, kids and uh, your, your, you know, um, and now your nieces and nephews. Mm -hmm. um, I enjoy it a lot. Like since I was in high school, I was always babysitting. I kind of do it on my free time when I'm not like in basketball or in the summer. So being mm -hmm. around kids and giving back to them is just an exciting feeling just so they could see that like there's opportunities for them and um, yeah, to have fun with them. I mentioned you had some big games, you know, Western Kentucky last year, big game against Vanderbilt. They could score 23 and then, in the women's NIT, Western Kentucky playing in the postseason, you put up 24, a season high against Kansas. It kind of feels like you get up for big games or facing bigger opponents. What is it about playing at a bigger stage that um, that uh, causes you to raise your game? Mm -hmm. I just love a challenge. I feel like um, when I'm put at that role to compete against bigger squads and stuff, I feel like it's fun. I feel like it's very competitive i am a competitive person so i always find it as a fun little challenge to just go out there and play my game and be versatile the all defensive team in the conference last year i mentioned the scoring which is great and again you were the team's second leading scorer last year but you know uh to play just as hard on the other end of the uh, you know of the court can be challenging but it feels like it's something that you really take a lot of pride in you know what is it about your defense that um that stands out I feel like it motivates offense. Um, I feel like my defense is very aggressive. Um, it's very uh, fun to watch. It's very energetic. And I, I feel like it can get the team going if we're down, if we're up, if we need that little push for offense. I feel like it inspires that to do better on the offensive end as well as just to do better on defense. Well, I'm sure that, you know, Coach Antoine, you know, has taken notice of that. Probably one of the reasons why, you know, they wanted to bring you into Texas State. So, 
you know, we know why they wanted to bring you in. Uh, and we talked about your decision to transfer and wanting to be closer to family, but there are other programs, you know, in the state that could have done that for you, provided you, you know, closer proximity to the foster family. So why Texas State specifically? I would say um, not only the basketball aspect, but the ag academic aspect, they have a lot to offer. I feel like as well as Coach Z, she brings a lot to the table as building my skill, making me a better basketball player um, in practice to, you know, just mm -hmm. be better on the court as not only a player, but as a person as well, have the right energy attitude and all that. So I feel like she offered a lot during that, my recruiting process and that um, made me pick my decision to be here at Texas State. How much did the fact that this team won a championship last year factor into your decision as well? Because certainly I would think that anybody would want to be a part of a championship culture and a team, you know, that's been a proven winner. How much did that factor into it for you? It's a big thing, and it's a big role to carry on, knowing that uh, we have, like, a lot of shoes to fill and hopefully get another ring this year. But um, it's fun. It's exciting to know that they did that, and so I hope we can do the same. As I mentioned at the top, you know, this is a team that has a lot to replace from a year ago and not just from a number standpoint. You know, Hood was a great score and Taylor was a, a tremendous you know, point guard getting her teammates involved. Ja'Kayla Bowie, really good all around player among some of the others that they lost from a year ago. Um, but the leadership that they brought, you know, the experience they had, uh, you know, on and off the floor. Um, and it, it feels like that the team is, is, is leaning on some of these players that might be new to the program like yourself, but with experience. How does it feel for you this year to maybe be taking on a leadership role for a program that you're kind of brand new to? Mm -hmm. It actually feels good, and it, it's almost as I'm ready for it. They've um, prepared me for it. Um, it's mm -hmm. not like I'm jumping into this role with no clue, clue. Like, they're giving me the leadership skills. They're giving me, like, the player development that I can to, like, work with my teammates as well like we're all new but they're also all helping us to make sure we can fill in those leadership roles okay i think you're one of seven newcomers on the team um who have you gotten to know the best you know so far i'm sure you've gotten to know all your teammates at some level but who have you developed some tight relationships with um i would say kennedy clay brooks um the freshman mm -hmm. of court I would say pretty much the whole team. I feel like we have a pretty tight bond of just making sure we're forming a family because we're all new. We're all different. We're all coming mm -hmm. from different programs. And um, it's fun to learn that. So making sure we're just close and we can gain that aspect on and off the court. What was the preseason camp like for the team? You know, the, the workouts as you prepare for this opener coming up in just a few days. What was the, the lead up to the season like for you? It was very informational, I would say. It's a lot of new things because there's so many, like, new of us here. So I would say it's a lot of developing, just um, fundamentals, um, getting ready for the um, season to come. So taking our time, but also still working hard, still getting in the gym, still doing tough toughness things, but definitely uh, informational. Uh, so I mentioned that, you know, you're, you're from Texas and uh, hometown officially listed as Austin, but you played – actually south of San Marcos, your high school basketball at Steele. Um, I don't know if I saw this right. Um, did you not start playing basketball until you got into high school? Is that correct? Yeah, I actually started um, my AAU season in my junior year, and then I transferred schools to Steele, and so that was my, like, first really big high school year of um, mm -hmm. high school basketball. So, yeah. You're familiar with the Steel program. It's always had a tremendous girls basketball program. And, you know, uh, growing up, you know, in this area, Central Texas, and then playing, you know, at Steel, to start so late in your development is really tough because some of these girls have been playing since they were, you know, six, seven years old. Um, so what was it for you that got you into basketball at such a later stage? And, and you know, were there some hurdles you had to clear in order to, to catch up to where everybody else was in terms of their development? Mm -hmm. I would say till this day, like I'm still learning, like each day is a learning process for me. And that's why I find it so fun because when I, when I learn something and I get better at it, I find it like as a challenge and I find it fun. So each day I was learning and to still till today I'm learning. So it's always a good, a fun project to do, but yeah. So what was it that got you into basketball then? You, you, again, you've only been playing, I guess, then for what, you know, five, six years or so now. So 
Um, what was the deciding factor for you to give this a try and, you know, and, and go for it? Uh, my AU season of my junior year, I picked up, it was my first AU season and I picked up seven offers. And mm-hmm. so I was like, oh, let's like, let's go with it. My first sport was volleyball, but I felt like it was a little harder of getting offers or um, I should have, I was going to play it when I transferred to Steel, but I decided to like give it all into basketball. And that's when I started picking up more and more offers. So I was like, let's stick with it. Let's get better with it and let's grow at it. And yeah, that's what I did. I want to get back to your family here for a second. And from what I've been told, the a foster family is one that has a lot of strong women in it. Yeah. Uh, I want to start with your mom. You know, what 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 kind of uh, what kind of woman is, is uh, your mom? Um, she's taught me everything I know about independence, um, just doing stuff for your own, just go and get it on your own. She's raised me and my sister growing up. Mm-hmm. Still to this day, she's a great grandmother. She doesn't like being called grandma, but we call her Judy. <laughs> But, um, yeah, she's just a very powerful woman. I look up to her and everything she does, and I will forever, like, give back to her for that and say thank you. So your mom is kind of new to being a grandmother, yes. But uh, <laughs> but your but your grandmother, your mom's mom, uh, has, some, has some military experience. Tell me a little bit more about that. Uh, she's taught me everything I know, and that's to, like, make your bed in the morning, manners, respect, like, respect those who respect you, and just to... You know, don't ever ask for anything. Like, don't ever wait for anything to get handed to you, but just to go out and get it. Um, she's also a very powerful woman, and she's taught me independence as well. So, yeah, she just, she's always had that mindset of just going and get it. How empowering is that, Jalen? You know, I mean, I t- we, we talk about your mom and your grandmother and what they've done and what they're doing, and here you are kind of carving your own path and, now think about, you know, women's basketball and the sport has grown exponentially over the last five or 10 years in terms of its, you know, popularity and the level of play just keeps getting better. And you know, there's more and more opportunities for women in all aspects of, you know, of, of life and, you know, and in the, the quote real world. So how empowering is that, you know, for you to be living in this time? It's definitely empowering. It's definitely I feel like there's always an opportunity out there to seek. You just have to want to seek it. Um Everything is like getting handed to you, whether it's like NIL, endorsement deals. So like Mm -hmm. just wanting to go get it, you have to be able to do it yourself. Like it's not just going to be offered to you. You have to want to go get it. So I always find that very encouraging and very powerful that women now have this opportunity to do so in life. How excited are you? How excited are you to get this thing going? You know, again, you you transfer in from Western Kentucky. You've been here for a few months now. You finally get to play some games, you know, starting this coming week, how ready are you for it? I'm excited. I'm ready. I'm ready for the challenge. I'm ready for the new conference. I'm ready to face up just different opponents. I'm ready to be with a new team and just have real, a real good fun time. And so it's going to be an exciting year for sure. Good stuff. Well, Jalen, thanks so much for doing, joining us in the podcast. Best of luck to you, you know, throughout the season. Enjoy being an ant when, you know, time allows as well during the busy schedule that is a student athlete. And uh, thanks again. For sure. Yes. Thank you so much. All right, that again, Jalen Foster, our guest on this week's State Sub Podcast. The Bobcats, again, defending their Sunbelt regular season crown. The defense of that title starts on Monday, November the 6th, when the Bobcats host Arlington Baptist will have it for you on ESPN+. Plus. For Jalen Foster, I'm Brad Freeman, reminding you, as always, to keep your states up, and we'll see you next time. Go Bobcats.